Okay, uh, read-only collections. Uh, all collections in JavaScript right now are pervasively mutable. And pervasive mutability, mutation is the source of much angst in software engineering, uh, and a lot of progress in software engineering is to find ways to avoid mutability when we don't need it. So there's the principle of least authority, uh, only give things the ability to, to cause changes that they need to have to do their job, which prevents uh, all sorts of uh, accidental or malicious exploits. Uh, defensive programming, functional programming, uh, and a new one that uh, we became aware of through TC53 and the modable folk uh, is that uh, things which are not mutable can be put in ROM, and right now, uh, Modable and the TC53 efforts are actually paying the costs of not being able to put in ROM in a cheap way uh, some collections whose JavaScript semantics does not uh, enable them to be expressed in, a, in an immutable manner. So just a, a quick historical uh, sequence here, which is when I got involved in the committee, um, uh, it was the ES3 days, everything was pervasively mutable everywhere. It was uh, really impossible to do any kind of defensive programming. So uh, ES5 introduced object.freeze, which enables you to tamper-proof an API surface by, by locking down uh, public properties. Uh, and that was uh, tremendous uh, progress. Uh, but then ES6 introduced collections, and all the collections were, were the collection contents were all mutable. So this proposal uh, is trying to give us a standard way to get control of collection mutability. Everything I'm saying applies to all, or at least most, of the collections we have, but I'm going to do this part of the talk in terms of one particular example collection abstraction, which is the map. So the thing that we call map has both query and update mutations, and with a map, you can use these, these update operations uh, to cause mutations. So you can both cause mutations and observe the mutations that you cause with a map. We're proposing uh, a pattern that, uh, uh, that you see here. We're proposing this pattern be extended in general to all collections. Um, so uh, there be a variant of map called fixed map, which is uh, query only and that the contents of the collection as seen through these query operations are stable. That whatever you see now through those query operations on a given fixed map, you'll always see uh, for the same query on the same fixed map. And then a read-only map uh, where the, the, the query methods on fixed map and read-only map and map are all the same query methods. Read-only map and, and fixed map, in fact, have the same API, just the query methods, uh, but the guarantees are different. Um, uh, on a read-only map, you can the query operations might show you different values at different times so that you can observe mutation. But if I give you a read-only map, you might be able to observe mutations that I cause, but by giving you a read-only map, you can't cause those mutations. You can only observe them, and hence, hence the only in the name. And then there be three universal methods where, where all collections uh, would, would uh, have all three of these methods. Uh, first message is snapshot, where a snapshot always gives you back a map that obeys the fixed map contract. So if you do it to a fixed map, the fixed map already obeys the fixed map contract, so it just returns itself. If you do it to a map or a read-only map, then it makes a snapshot of the current state of those maps and gives you back a new fixed map with that snapshot. So example piece of code, um, uh, uh, f, if you say fm equals uh, m dot snapshot, then uh, fm dot get eight will always be the same as it was, 
and it will be the same thing as uh, m dot get get eight was at the moment of the snapshot. Okay. The almost opposite uh, operation is diverge. Diverge always gives you back a new map. And by, and by map, I mean the thing we're currently, you know, that we call map, uh, which I'm going to refer to for clarity in this presentation as a mutable map. Uh, so diverge always gives you back a fresh mutable map. So obviously, if you do it to a read-only map or a fixed map, it has to give you back a new one. Uh, what might be surprising is even if you do it on a mutable map, you get back a new mutable map. Uh, and the reason is that the mutations done on the new mutable map are following an independent history or decoupled from any mutations on the map that you did it from. Um, so it start, so the, the new mutable map starts off with a snapshot of the state of the map that you started with and then diverges from there. And then read-only view gives you back a map that satisfies the read-only view contract. And I, th this is the one where uh, it's important to speak precisely. It doesn't give you back an instance of read-only map. It gives you map back a map that satisfies the read-only view contract. And the contract is that, um, that if you say to uh, some map read-only view and you get back a read-only view of it, then uh, whatever the query operations um, uh, would show to be the state of the original map that you said the read-only view on, the, the query operations on the read-only view continue to give you back the same values. So if you have a read-only map, it can return the same map. If you get, have a regular map, it gives you back a read-only view that tracks the continuing evolution of the map you started with. Uh, and uh, a, the read-only view of a fixed map is just the fixed map itself. So it's not an instance of, it's not a direct instance of read-only map, but it obeys the read-only map contract. So these three operations would clearly apply to both map and set. Weak map and weak set are an interesting case. Uh, Read-only view uh, clearly uh, applies and is meaningful and can be implemented with a shim. Uh, also, by the way, all these operations could be implemented as a with a shim on map and set. Uh, what's um, a little bit surprising is to consider snapshot and diverge on weak map and weak set. Uh, I think that they should. I'm. I'm uh, I'm expecting to go forward with them as part of this proposal to propose that we do add uh, snapshot and diverge to weak map and weak set. Uh, this is something that the platform can provide in a fairly straightforward manner. Uh, the surprising thing is that it's actually possible to shim them, uh, but it's not very practical. Uh, the, um, it takes a tremendous amount of bookkeeping to shim these because you can't enumerate the contents of the weak map or weak set in order to take a snapshot. Um, uh, but as things for the proposal and things to, to become provided by the platform, I think they would be quite valuable. Typed arrays, I think all of these just apply directly with no qualification. Likewise with array buffers. An array buffer is the one whose absence uh, really hurt, is really currently hurting uh, the moddable and TC53 efforts. You really want to be able to at build time, calculate the contents of an array buffer, then uh, create a uh, fixed array buffer, an immutable one, so that it can be put into ROM, and then cut a ROM with the entire array buffer just in ROM with no bookkeeping to, to emulate the ability to mutate the array buffer. Uh, there's some oddballs. Uh, which I don't know what to do with. I haven't really thought deeply about. Certainly would like feedback during stage one. Um, uh, shared array buffers, uh, for which probably these things are not meaningful or they're meaningful in a limited manner. Uh, normal arrays, I'm proposing that we do not try to extend this scheme to normal arrays because normal arrays 
aren't really a collection in a coherent manner. Uh, they can have holes in it. If you have a hole at the number three, and there happens to be a property named three on array.prototype or object.prototype that will inherit, I mean, there's just all sorts of craziness, and that's because uh, normal arrays are really just objects with number named properties in a special length behavior. They're not really recognized by the language as a, as a collection type. And then finally, there's objects themselves, which are often thought about as if they're a collection of properties or, or a collection of property to, to uh, property value mappings. Um, and uh, I think that one could consider reflective views of an object to be a collection. Um, uh, so that you know, things like from entries is giving you back a collection that, rep that represents in collection API, um, in that case an iterator, uh, well, in a array, um, uh, represents a view of the object, but the object themselves should not, uh, we should not extend these to them. I think that way madness lies as well. Some issues to consider that I'm proposing not be included in the proposal, but I'm happy to have them be questions to examine during stage one, uh, is uh, this proposal does not include any means to fix an, a, a collection in place. Uh, so like object.freeze for properties fixes the properties in place. It doesn't make a new object that's like the old object with fixed properties. It just takes the properties that it has and fixes them in place. One could imagine a similar operation for a mutable map. Uh, the reason I think it would be a bad idea, one of the reasons I think it would be a bad idea, uh, is that you don't get API clarity. Uh, if you do that. The, the mutable map continues to inherit from map, continues to inherit all the update operations, and the update operations would now just throw errors. Uh, and I think that by making these things uh, essentially three distinct class-like abstractions, uh, where the other two only have the query operations, the API doesn't suggest that, you, that th things will work that don't. Um, it also avoids uh, the issue of whether you're mutable or not being a stateful thing as opposed to what, what object you are. Um, uh, array buffers, when they hit post message, uh, do ownership transfer and detaching. Uh, and one could imagine trying to bring out a um, general cross-collection uh, language-based view of ownership transfer and detaching of, of continuing mutable state. Um, uh, but I'm not proposing to include that uh, in this proposal. And that's it. Now I will break for questions. All right, we got a lot of things in the queue. First up is Walmart. Oh, 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 sorry, hold on. Wait till I stop recording. <laughs>